I'm with John Peterson, VP of Enterprise Product Management at Komodo. Welcome, John. Thank you. It's good to be here. John, everybody associates Komodo with uh, you know digital certificates, and yet uh, Komodo is doing a lot in the malware space. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Komodo um, is known for being uh, in the certificate world. We actually are the uh, leader in, in SSL certificates. Um, we are now the number one certificate authority in the world. Uh, but one of the things that we also do is uh, is malware prevention. So uh, over the past year or so, we've been kind of ramping up our technology and our marketing efforts to uh, to get the message out a bit more about what we do as it relates to, to malware protection. What do you see in the world of malware? It's obviously still with us. We've been trying for a long time. Well, we clearly see an increase in the, uh, the rate of malware creation. I think uh, there's a statistic that said about 84 million new pieces of malware were just generated last year alone. So, and that's uh, largely because there's a new strain of existing malware that continues to, to happen. And uh, whenever this new strain of an existing piece of malware occurs, uh, you end up having a, a lot of unknown or zero-day malware. So that's one of the things that we're seeing is the trend in the, uh, in the rate of, of malware creation. That makes it, of course, very, very hard for uh, security vendors to keep up with. And the attackers are, they have automated systems to spin up that many versions of malware every day? That's right, so it's no longer, uh, you know, new creations of malware, it's really new strains. There's a lot of automated tools. Um, in fact, there's uh, in, the, in the black market, you can actually go online and, uh, and purchase malware kits. And you can use these malware kits to create kind of customized versions of the existing malware. So that happens a lot. Wow. What's uh, Komodo's uh, unique take on this? Well, we, we took a look at the problem and we, uh, you know, we see that malware always starts off as an unknown file. And what we're now seeing is that the rate of uh, unknown files is so high that it just doesn't work anymore to try to do a, uh, a blacklisting or signature-based approach. So what we're doing is taking this new approach. It's very clear on how you treat a known good file, you allow it. And it's very clear on how you treat a, a known bad file, you, you deny it. But the real question is, what do you do about an unknown file? And there's been approaches lately to kind of take these unknown files and then run them in a sandbox. And once run in a sandbox, you know, maybe you can identify whether it's good or bad, but during that whole period and process of a analyzing the file, uh, you end up having patient zero being infected. So what we do is we actually eliminate patient zero from having to get infected, and we take unknown files and we put them in a container. Um, so that container allows the unknown file to um, run and execute, and you can interact with it because it could be unknown good. Uh, but it also could be unknown bad. So we put it in a container where it's isolated from the rest of your computing environment. So if somebody receives a PDF or a PowerPoint presentation, they can actually look at it without concern for being infected at the same time. That's right. So you can kind of click on anything, right? You can click on and download anything without fear of uh, your computer system being compromised. Um, again, the application or PDF or EXE that you're actually downloading uh, gets run in isolation. It has a... Uh, uh, a separate set of uh, CPU processing that it's allocated. It's got a separate file system that it's restricted to. It can only make certain calls to uh, certain places in memory and things like that. So it's completely isolated from your computing environment, um, rendering, rendering your uh, computing environment immune to any kind of mal malware that might be uh, brought into your environment. And you, so you uh, distribute a client, you suffer, what impact does the user see from that? Yeah, so this technology that, uh, that I call containment is delivered in a, a number of different ways. We have our advanced endpoint protection uh, solution. Um, we also have our uh, secure web platform solution, which is a cloud uh, kind of a web security gateway uh, type of uh, technology. But in either technology, this containment um, exists. And with the endpoint side of things, it's a very, very lightweight uh, client that takes up about 10 meg of, of RAM. And, uh, doesn't really cause any performance issues or anything like that. Um, we also have a solution, again, that's running in our secure web platform that we call portable containment, which is a clientless solution. So if your, uh, your computer is going through this cloud proxy, um, the cloud proxy will analyze the file in flight uh, to determine whether it's known good or bad. And if it's unknown, it'll wrap that file in flight and then send it on its way to the endpoint. Do you see an opportunity to uh, displace these, you know, separate sandbox solutions that certain vendors are selling? Yeah, you know, I think sandbox technology will um, will always have a home. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, there's opportunity for us to displace it, but I think there's also opportunity for us to augment it. Um, if customers have have chosen a sandbox solution and they they want to stick with that, 
they can and they can augment that sandbox technology with containment technology. Containment is like uh, a cousin to sandboxing. It's a mm -hmm. little bit different, it's a little bit similar. Uh, sandboxing, again, is analyzing a file to determine its true state, whereas containment is actually putting on a, f a file in a uh, container and allowing you to interact with it, but keeping it isolated from the rest of your computing environment. We do both, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's up to the customer on how they want to deploy, but we don't have to completely replace in order for our solution to exist. And is a container uh, like a complete uh, virtual machine or something more simplistic? It's, uh, it's similar to a virtual machine. I always like to describe our containment technology um, more like um, Docker. So if you're familiar with Docker technology, it's another way of doing uh, virtualization that's different than a full-on virtual machine. Uh, a virtual machine in its traditional sense uh, virtualizes the whole operating environment and it's very heavy. Uh, whereas a Docker-like approach only virtualizes the things you need, which makes it very, very lightweight, which is why we only take about 10 meg of RAM. And you mentioned both cloud and endpoint, so this is, is that defense in depth, or do you need cloud to cover the mobile environment? It's a, it's a defense in depth approach. Uh, you know, recently, um, I think it was IDC came out with a category that they're, they're tracking and calling it STAP, Specialized Threat Analysis and Protection. Right. And uh, they talk about having this specialized type of technology at the boundary, at the endpoint, and at the internal network. What we're doing is taking this containment technology and this approach and applying it across all three of those areas uh, to have kind of a total 100% STAP solution. So customers can choose to do all of that, uh, but they don't have to. They could only do portion of the network this way. So unlike some of the other um, you know, virtualization systems for containment on endpoints where they either virtualize the browser or seem to virtualize every application, um, this is more file-centric. That's right. We have the ability to, to virtualize the browser and a specific application like our competitors do. We don't think that that's the right approach. Hmm. Um, we believe that uh, things should only exist in containment for very short periods of time. If they exist in a container for long periods of time, you introduce usability issues. Mm -hmm. Because by the nature of a, of a container, you, its whole purpose is to restrict things. Mm -hmm. So if I put a browser in a container uh, permanently or indefinitely, like a, some of our competitors do, then I would be restricting what the browser's full capability is. So we take this file approach where we, uh, we look at the file, we try to determine whether it's a uh, known good file. And by the way, we are well positioned to, to determine known good files because we are a certificate authority and we have uh, visibility into known good software publishers by way of the certificates that they use to sign them. Um, but we also take this approach of uh, looking at known bad, uh, like traditional antivirus technology does, and then in the event that it's completely unknown, that's when we put that file in the container. And then we try to release it from the container as soon as we get a verdict back uh, from the sandboxes. Again, I mentioned earlier, eliminating patient zero, that's how you do it. How are your early customers responding to the offering? Uh, responding very well, we've had uh, one customer that we're very, very close to, a very large enterprise, can't mention their name, but they've been running the, the technology for well over a year now, and uh, we check in on them uh, periodically, and every time we do, they say they haven't experienced any, uh, any more malware outbreaks since they've deployed Komodo. Wow. And is this something that would also displace traditional antivirus, or at least get you down to, hey, just use... Microsoft Essentials. Yeah, actually it does. It does have the ability to displace traditional antivirus uh, because we, uh, we do the old and we do the new. So we do antivirus, we do firewall, we do host intrusion prevention, URL filtering. We do all those legacy things that mm -hmm. a, a traditional endpoint security pro product would, would do, but we've augmented that with, um, with this containment type of thing. And some of our competitors, they're just going down the path of doing the new stuff and not the old stuff. So right. we can actually uh, work with our customers and leverage their existing budgets that they have for antivirus and give them the new new capabilities. Does the you know current environment for new endpoint solutions, you alluded to them, right? So there's all these new ways, you know, in memory, kernel analysis, all the rest. Do you see them as having, you know, a, a higher hill to climb in order to get acceptance? Um, I, I think so because I think the market still uh, understands antivirus mm -hmm. and they are still learning the new types of technologies. So it's, it's hard to get market acceptance when you have to educate um, something new. And we are able to go in and do the traditional, again, antivirus while we're educating. So it's a little, a little easier for us to kind of climb that hill than some of our competitors. But, you know, everyone has a, has a challenge when introducing sure, a new technology. Absolutely. So AV, whitelisting and containers all combined.
That's right. Yep, blacklisting, whitelisting, and containment. Beautiful. Thank you, John. Thank you.